In the offices of online magazine Depravity, editor Susan is dealing with Danny, a photo editor that wants to make it as a writer. Her article Why Am I So Sad describes the way she feels empty inside by blaming it on privileged facts like living in New York City and not having been in the country when 9-11 happened, which was supposed to define her generation. Susan obviously turns it down and calls Danny out for being tone deaf, which is a huge part of her personality. Danny is still obsessed with being popular, and she shows it by the way she chases after the most successful writers at work like a puppy. Everyone ignores her for being extremely bland and superficial, including her crush Colin, a co-worker of hers and a big social influencer. She's so tone deaf that she doesn't see what a hypocrite she is for complaining about the lack of attention from the popular employees while she ignores the underdogs that try to socialize with her. Danny doesn't even bother to learn the names of said underdogs, but her awful manners appear when she interacts with the popular workers too. When she overhears queer writers Harper and Larson are having a queer bowling night, she tries to invite herself, claiming to be one of them just because she kissed a girl in college once. When Harper informs her she can't come, Danny has the nerve to say queer people are lucky because they have a community in their parades while she'll be spending the night alone in her apartment. One afternoon, Danny wants to check the new matcha cafe in town and bumps into Colin, who doesn't even know who she is. Danny strikes up a conversation anyway and pretends she likes smoking the same way he does, going as far as accepting to taste his weird-looking cigarette when he offers and lying about her position in the magazine, claiming to be into writing already. She also mentions the possibility of going on a writer's retreat sometime, and when Colin expresses real interest in that, Danny goes all out with the lie and says she'll be going on a retreat to Paris next week. When she returns home, Danny tries to solve this because she doesn't have the money to actually travel to Paris and there's no way her parents will help. Suddenly, her guinea pig walks all over her keyboard while she's editing some pictures, and the juxtaposition of photos gives Danny an idea, she can pretend to be in Paris by uploading edited pictures to her social media. Danny goes all out with the lie, calling Susan to ask for her vacation days and letting her parents know that she's going on a trip, she even designs a fake website for the supposed retreat she's joining. She puts more work into these pictures than she usually does at her actual job and this earns her a modest amount of followers, including Colin himself. A few days after this started, Danny posts a picture of herself in the Arc de Triomphe, being careful to calculate the time zone difference to make her comment match the right time of the day in France. Afterward, she goes to sleep, only to wake up in the morning to find dozens of notifications asking how she is. It turns out that early in the morning, a string of coordinated terrorist attacks hit several major Parisian landmarks, including the place from Danny's picture. The criminals haven't been found yet, but multiple witnesses have reported seeing a suspicious individual wearing a green jacket. Danny's phone won't stop vibrating with messages from friends and family, and her mother directly calls her to check on her, asking her to come back. Nervous with fear and pressure, Danny begins wondering if she should come clean until she also gets a message from Colin. That's when it hits her, being a tragedy survivor gives her the attention she's always wanted, thus she decides to keep the lie up and make a post telling everyone she's fine. The next day, Danny sneaks around the airport with a suitcase and joins the crowd coming back from France to pretend she's also a new arrival. Her parents Judith and Harold are there to receive her with tears and a hug, yet Danny puts most of her attention on looking upset for the reporters. Moments later at her parents' house, Danny is spoiled in a way she never was before, so she goes all out with the lie and says she had been very close to the explosion, having walked away only seconds before it went off. That night, she has a dream of being in Paris and being followed by the green jacket stranger. The attention she receives doubles when she goes to work the following day and everyone receive her like a celebrity. With her best pitiful face, Susan informs Danny that she can take the day off if she needs it and that she'll help in any way. Still eager to take advantage of this whole situation, Danny asks for permission to write an article about her whole experience, and Susan agrees to publish it. Then, Danny tells all her co-workers an overdramatic lie about her experience in Paris, which earns her lots of attention, sympathy, and even an invitation to queer bowling night from Harold. Even Colin comes to check on her and gifts her a get well cigarette. Later in the subway, Danny notices her picture on a news account and comments mentioning that's her, which brings hundreds of new followers to her socials. When the light flickers, Danny thinks she can see the green jacket stranger nearby, but blames it on her mind playing tricks on her. The next step to solidify the lie is to write the article, but Danny doesn't know what to write considering she didn't really go through this trauma. A solution comes to mind when she remembers her mother mentioning a support group for survivors, and decides to pay them a visit to gather inspiration from their experiences. The group is led by Linda, who understands if Danny doesn't want to talk on her first day because her trauma is still so fresh. Many people there have things to say, but the one that expresses herself the best is Rowan, a teenager that survived a school shooting. Danny is bored by the meeting and doesn't intend to come back, but when she overhears a member mentioning Rowan being huge online, Danny magically becomes friendlier and tries to socialize with Rowan, asking for her number and promising to hang out some time while ignoring other members asking for the same thing. When she gets home, Danny searches Rowan online and discovers she's a very important activist in the anti-gun movement and her speeches are powerful because of how much raw emotion she puts into them. Sometime later, 
Danny texts Rowan to invite her to hang out, and Rowan gladly accepts because she needs a friend that understands and is closer to her in age, like an older sister. Of course Danny's intentions aren't that pure, she wants Rowan's advice on how to write a powerful article. Rowan accepts to help, but instead of taking Danny to a cafe, she takes her to a place known as Rage Space. Here, people can pay to destroy things as a way to channel all their inner dark emotions. Tone deaf as usual, Danny has fun with it and laughs, but Rowan ends the experience in tears as she explains this is how she writes, you have to expose your own truth, because if you're not okay, that's okay as pain is your biggest asset. Excited to have the inspiration she needs, Danny returns home ready to write. Her article explains that people don't need to hear her experience, because what matters is that pain can be an asset and everyone should be allowed to express themselves instead of scrolling through so many dooming headlines, for which she encourages everyone to use the hashtag I am not okay. The article is a hit among Danny's co-workers, especially Colin, but something begins rubbing Harper wrong. Once the article is published, Danny sends it to Rowan pretending to be a gesture of gratitude but hoping Rowan will share it with her followers. Rowan feels strange about seeing her own words rewritten like that, but she shares the article anyway because she wants to be supportive of other survivors. Thanks to Rowan, Danny's article goes viral, soon everyone is sharing their feelings using Danny's hashtag, even celebrities, and Danny's name is known now as an important influencer. The next time Danny visits the support group, she begins talking about sharing her pain through the article, but she forgets to keep the act for long and begins gushing about her fame. Rowan gets uncomfortable but tries to stay supportive, reminding Danny about being careful when it comes to internet trolls. After the meeting, Danny learns about a kickball game the group will be having on the weekend and promises to go. Rowan also shares about the incoming talent show in her school which she isn't sure she should join with her poetry, but Danny encourages her to do it because she's incredibly talented with words. The moment gets awkward when Rowan admits this is harder without the support of her sister, who died during the shooting. After Danny leaves Rowan at her school, she notices a street ad and once again, thinks the green jacket stranger is there with her. Sometime later at the office, there's a small casual party to celebrate Danny's article becoming the most popular publication in the magazine in years. The underdogs keep trying to talk to Danny to share how she's inspired them, but Danny keeps ignoring them in favor of Colin, who invites her to a party next weekend and Danny accepts while forgetting about Rowan's invitation to the kickball match. Then, Danny is approached by Harper, who wants to hear more about Danny's experience in Paris. The details that Danny manages to make up on the spot only help increase her suspicion. On Saturday, Danny goes to Colin's party, which is filled with spots to take selfies for their socials and product placements from sponsors. Danny gets to spend some time with Colin doing shots and making tone-deaf clips for Instagram, but even in the middle of having fun, Danny sees the green jacket stranger among the crowd. This is starting to get on her nerves badly, so she asks Colin to get out of here, which Colin gladly accepts in order to take her to the bathroom and get frisky. Unfortunately Danny doesn't have a good time because Colin finishes too soon while still connected. Frustrated and disappointed, Danny goes to the nearest pharmacy to buy some plan B and avoid accidental babies. Then, she checks her socials, noticing Colin already hanging out with other girls at the party and Rowan having a modest but fun time at the game. This gives Danny a huge wake-up call about the company she keeps and hurries to join the support group at their kickball match. Danny has never been a sports person, but the evening turns out to be lots of fun and shows her where good people truly are. Rowan once again expresses her gratitude for having a young person in the group now, especially since she doesn't have her sister anymore, and Danny volunteers to help her with the preparations for the next rally so she can have the support she needs. From then on, Danny begins making more posts about important causes and promoting Rowan's organization, although she doesn't shy away from the more superficial aspects of interviews like showing off her fashion style. Sometime later, Harper brings her latest article to Danny because Susan wants her to add her viral touch, but Danny is heading out for the rally so she promises to look into it later. On her way out, Danny is approached by Colin, who wants to ask her out, but Danny only sees him as a loser now and turns all his invitations down. Meanwhile, Harper realizes Danny left her laptop open with a video running, the lack of password gives Harper the opportunity to snoop around a little bit. A moment later, Rowan and Linda pick Danny up, and this is how she learns their mother and daughter. Linda used to work at the school where the shooting happened before she quit in order to work for the support group. Rowan is obviously nervous about today, knowing there are always dangerous detractors that can cause trouble during the rally, so Danny helps her relax by playing the songs Rowan had mentioned enjoying with her sister. Once the girls reach their destination, security helps them get on the stage, where Rowan allows Danny to speak first. Danny has prepared an adequate speech for the event, speaking respectfully of the issue of gun control and mentioning Rowan's sister, saying she should be here instead of her, although she can't help including her incident in France too. Among the crowd, Danny once again sees the green jacket stranger, but this time she manages to ignore it to keep her attention on the speech. Unfortunately the act doesn't last long, a group of trolls that calls them snowflakes throws some firecrackers at the stage, causing everyone to leave in fear and for Rowan to go through a PTSD attack. Their private security guides the girls out safely, 
but the police don't do much, and reporters won't back up when Danny asks them to give them some space. Hours later, Rowan is hospitalized and her collapse is all over the news, with thousands of comments insulting her on social media, considering her weak and laughing at the fact the firecracker brand was truth bomb. A war veteran even goes as far as accusing Rowan of having lied about being a school shooting survivor. The disgusting sight of it all leaves Danny in tears, but she puts herself together when it's her turn to visit Rowan. The poor girl feels she failed to be an example, crying over her shame and weakness, thus Danny tries to remind her trolls opinions don't matter. However Danny begins feeling ashamed when Rowan wonders how she can stay so strong all the time. Their conversation is interrupted when the doctor comes by to check on Rowan, and Danny uses the excuse to go home. On her way out, Danny is stopped by Linda, who thanks her for supporting Rowan today as the only person that understands, which makes Danny's guilt worse. When she gets home, Danny has another nightmare of her in Paris, and this time she has to watch Rowan run towards the area of the explosion. Desperate to save her, Danny goes after her, only to bump into the green jacket stranger and discover her own face under the hood. The nightmare comes to a sudden stop as Danny wakes up, thanks to the doorbell. It's Harper, who has found out the truth after she looked into Danny's computer. Harper wants her to come clean and gives her time until Monday, otherwise, she'll write an exposing article herself. In tears, Danny tries to explain she's a better person now yet tries to bribe Harper, who yells at her to remind her that people died and that she owes Rowan an apology. After having a breakout all over the apartment, Danny decides to write her truth so she can at least offer her side of the story. She says she takes full responsibility for her actions, yet she also mentions the day the lie started she had been depressed and under the effects of pot. She swears she regrets her actions, and promises she's working to change for the better, for which coming clean is the first step. Danny also considers going to the support group to apologize to everyone face to face, especially Rowan, but when she gets closer to the building, she gets scared and runs away. The next morning, the article is published and quickly goes viral, making Rowan's name trend as well. As soon as she sees it, Rowan comes to the office to yell at Danny in front of everyone, expressing all her hurt over this betrayal and how she had to find out over a stupid article instead of deserving a conversation face to face. Their fight is interrupted by Susan, who fires Danny on the spot and makes her leave. In the following weeks, Danny has to live with the consequences of her actions. People on the internet are expressing her anger toward her in all kinds of ways, from mild comments calling her a bad person to all out death threats and doxing. Falling into depression again, Danny stays in her apartment, drinking most of the time, and only leaves when she needs to restock her fridge. But even at the store, she has to see her face in magazines and newspapers, not to mention the people that don't hesitate to harass her in real life. For the sake of her safety, Danny moves back with her parents, but things aren't any better there. Harold tries to be understanding even if he also gets death threats at work, but Judith is furious and yells at her with as many shameful comments as she can come up with. Eventually, the attacks on social media become too much, and Danny decides to deactivate all her accounts. Almost two months later, Danny begins attending the meetings of a support group for people that have been through online shaming. Thanks to lots of self-reflection, Danny admits she's discovered she never liked herself very much, and now she hates herself even more for not having seen what an easy privileged life she used to have. She can't even be sure if she's grown or learned anything, so to get started, the group leader advises making amends with the people she's hurt face to face instead of an online apology. Danny agrees it may help, so she decides to attend the talent show at Rowan's school, wearing a cap to go unnoticed in the crowd. She's brought a full apology written on her phone, and she keeps going over it to memorize it while other people are on the stage. However things quickly take a sour turn when Rowan's turn comes up next, her monologue isn't about her usual activism, instead she rants about her feelings having been used as clickbait, not to mention how people like Danny get documentaries while Rowan's community is told to sit and wait. Her monologue gets an outstanding ovation from the public and as Danny watches her run to hug her mother, she realizes the apology would be for her own benefit rather than for her friends. Deciding to do the right thing, Danny leaves the building, crying in silence. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.